A student suddenly falls from the sky. Soon her pupils turn grayish white as she crawls towards Kurumi. Jack pulls her wrist and runs towards the school building, but the student they meet in the stairwell has just been bitten by a zombie. Jack has to let his arm get bitten and bleed in order to protect her. Kurumi helps him to the rooftop to escape. With a scream, one of the infected completely loses his mind and attacks the students. They ignore Miss Sakura's instructions not to go downstairs. It's too late! The zombies then try to take over the rooftop. Miss Sakura locks the door and uses the air conditioning unit to block it. As the students are screaming their lungs out, a zombie appears behind them. Miss Sakura rushes over and pushes the zombie over a guardrail to get stabbed in the chest. Kurumi is shocked to see that Jack has also turned into a zombie and falls to the ground. In a panic, she can only pick up a shovel and knock him out. At this moment, the whole school is overrun and besieged by zombies. In order to make the three students not to give up, Miss Akara decides to set up a living department to help them survive in the campus. They plant many vegetables and fruits on the rooftop and go to the health center to collect usable supplies. However, when Miki goes to pick up a beer doll, a zombie suddenly crawls out from under the bed. Miss Akura swings a baseball bat and beats him up. Before everyone can recover, a zombie hiding behind the curtains suddenly makes a sneak attack. Kurumi is furious that Miss Akura has been bitten and immediately throws a shovel at the zombie's head. Miss Akura realizes that there is no cure for her and decides to stay in the health room to die. She told the students to live a good life and then locked herself inside the health center. Three students cried and said their last goodbyes to Miss Akura. Since then, Miki has been mentally stimulated, and every day, she sits alone in the classroom, giggling and fantasizing that Miss Sakura and her classmates are still alive. Although Miki is now mentally unstable, Yuki and Kurumi continue to take care of her. With little food left in the dormitory, the two girls decide to venture out to the cafeteria to search for supplies, but luckily, there are only a few zombies roaming the first floor halls. Yuki throws a few ping pong balls into the distance to try to attract their attention, and it worked! Seeing that the zombies were attracted away, the two of them quickly crossed the hall with small steps. When they came to the corner of the cafeteria, they found a zombie patrolling the area. Kurumi was so scared, she pressed herself against the wall and didn't dare make a sound. In fact, this zombie was suffering from cataracts when he was alive, so he didn't realize that there were people crouching next to him. As the zombie walks away, Yuki finally breathes a sigh of relief. Just as she turns her head, something terrible happens again. Kurumi looks up slowly and sees a zombie. He grabs the shovel and pulls her up from the ground. Yuki is too scared to help, but the zombie that just left is coming back for her. Yuki swings her baseball bat and hits him in the head. Miraculously, this guy's skin is so thick that even after being hit by a couple of bats, not only did he not faint, but he became even more excited. Yuki was so scared that she sat her day on the ground and kept retreating. The zombie took the opportunity to grab her calf. Kurumi is fighting with another zombie when she sees that Yuki is in danger. She instantly kills the zombie. Next, without any surprise, Yuki's attacker is also knocked out by Kurumi's shuffle. After the crisis is over, the two of them made it to the school cafeteria. They enter the back kitchen and start rummaging through the cupboards. And this time, they find their favorite spaghetti. But as Kurumi searched another room, she heard a noise from inside. She opened the door cautiously, and suddenly a man jumped at her, forcing her to the floor. Kurumi wasn't a pushover. She was on top of her opponent in no time. <laughs> The two of them realized it was a female student and took her back to campus life. As a precaution, Kurumi had her stripped naked for a full body check. After making sure she wasn't bitten by a zombie, the three of them were relieved. It turns out that Yuri is a sophomore and the only survivor from the North Campus. Seeing a new friend joining her, Mickey looked very happy and dragged Yuri up to the rooftop to see the beautiful scenery. As Mickey is immersed in a fantasy world, she thinks that her classmates are participating in various club activities. However, there are only zombies roaming around in the playground right now. Yuri looks at Miki in confusion, thinking that this girl is crazy. Then Miki showed her the broadcasting room. Yuri was a bit speechless when she saw Miki talking to the air. In order to get out of the school as soon as possible, she's caught by Kurumi while looking for a map and a car key in the office. Yuki urges her to stay, but Yuri thinks she's just sitting ducks. She's going against the odds. Early the next morning, an ear-splitting broadcast goes off. The zombies immediately become excited when they hear the music and head towards the direction of the radar. After the zombies left, Yuri took the opportunity to sneak out. However, Miki followed her. She has finally met her favorite schoolmate. How could she let her go without saying goodbye? Meanwhile, Kurumi rushed to the radio room and turned off the music. Their stupid move puts their two companions in a difficult situation. Although Yuri's fighting strength is not weak, the number of zombies is increasing. The two of them are cornered. Yuri quickly takes Miki to the roof of the car. The zombies swarmed around them and surrounded them. They were at a loss for what to do. Kurumi rushes over with a shovel and tries to lure them away. But it doesn't work. The zombies still stay put. Yuki, who is upstairs, suddenly has a bright idea and runs to the radio room to play a nice song to distract the zombies. At Kurumi's command, the two of them jumped out of the car. 
Mickey pulls Yuri and runs wildly through the zombies, while Kurumi covers for them. As they run, Yuri has a vision of her classmates and Misakura cheering for them. Even Misakura was cheering them on from the front. The three of them reached the finish line side by side. As the scene changes, we're back in reality, under the cover of Kurumi. They finally escape back to the safe zone. After this life and death ordeal, Yuri finally accepts Miki and joins their life team. In order to search for supplies in the warehouse, the mission is carried out by the strongest fighters. Kurumi and Yuri are so strong that they charge right into the zombies, lair with their weapons. In the small room, the two of them cooperate with each other and quickly eliminate several zombies around them. However, when Yuri kills the last zombie, she realizes that it's one of her classmates. She couldn't bear to do it and was paralyzed with fear. At the critical moment, Kurumi solves her problem with a shovel. After cleaning up the zombies, the four of them excitedly went to the school's reserve room. They were overjoyed by what they saw here. They saw that the storage room was neatly arranged, with all kinds of food and necessities, enough to support them for a few years. However, just as they were happily moving the goods, something terrible happened. A zombie appears and Yuki screams in fear. When Kurumi picks up a shovel to hit him, she realizes that the zombie is her crush. Jack, in fact, Jack has been in love with her for a long time. But it's a pity that Jack turned into a zombie before Kurumi had the chance to confess her love to him. That's why she couldn't hurt him this time. But then the zombie bared his teeth and threw himself on her and opened his mouth to take a bite out of her. Just in the nick of time, Yuki jumps in with a fire extinguisher and knocks him out. After the crisis was over, the four of them moved all the necessities to the living quarters. With a large stockpile of supplies, they come live here for a few years in order to prevent the zombies from invading. They got tools to reinforce the defense system. After a long day's work, the four girls had fun playing pillow fights to release their pin-up emotions. They watched the stars together on the rooftop, fantasizing about pursuing their dreams after graduation and returning to school to visit Misakura. In the county atmosphere, they were happy to be like sisters. They even organized a school festival, and Mickey brought Misakura along. But while they were celebrating, the alarm went off at an inopportune moment. It turns out that a zombie was bored and played with a lighter, causing a fire and triggering the alarm. The ear-splitting sound makes the zombies become very excited and gather in the direction of the school building. Kurumi leads the group downstairs to check out the classrooms and finds them restless. However, when they arrived at the first floor, something unexpected happened. The zombie horde breaks through the defenses. In a panic, the four of them are first to scatter. Seeing the situation, Yuri pulls Yuki and runs away. Kurumi holds a shovel to fend off the zombies and tells her companions to run. Miki runs out with her fantasy, Misakara. As the zombies keep coming in, Kurumi can only run away first. Meanwhile, Yuki's side is also in danger. She and Yuri grit their teeth and try their best to block the door. But there are too many zombies. Yuri pulls Yuki to run upstairs. But there are many zombies there too. Yuri and Yuki fell down together when she knocked them all down with a stick. Before they can get up, the zombies in the classroom suddenly break through the door, causing them to scream. The zombies in the other classrooms are also on the move. At this critical moment, the two of them hold hands and run wildly to avoid the waves of zombies. Yuri, with a now nearing pickaxe, kills the enemy and leaves Yuki to hide in an activity room. In order to prevent the zombies from breaking in, they move tables, chairs and sofas to block the door. But it's no use at all. The glass window is soon smashed through, followed by the door. An army of zombies swarmed in. The two of them sit on the ground and wail in despair. As the scene changes, Kurumi desperately runs up to the second floor and finds a large number of zombies gathered in the corridor. Seeing that there is no way out, she has no choice but to continue to run towards the upper floors. As soon as she reached the rooftop, a group of zombies chased her from behind. She tried her best to block the door, but it was hard to beat them, and the shovel in her hand was snatched away by the zombies. Luckily, there was a tumor to high step next to her, so she quickly climbed up. Although the zombies can't catch her, she's at the end of a rope. By now, Kurumi is exhausted. Just when she was about to give up, her favorite Jack appeared in front of her. Kurumi finally found the courage to confess her love to him. Jack then encouraged her not to give up. After some persuasion, he puts his bracelet on Kurumi's hand. The scene changes, and we're back in reality. The power of love has revitalized Kurumi. Then she takes a deep breath, and does a jump from the sky and lands perfectly. She picks up the shovel on the ground, and knocks out the zombies in front of her. Kurumi's fighting spirit is so strong that she's been able to create a way out from under the zombies' siege. Soon Kurumi arrives at the activity room, looking at the charred corpses on the floor and the climbing ticks, and a sense of foreboding sets in as she fell to her knees, sobbing uncontrollably. There was a sudden scream from nearby. She breaks open the boards and sees Yuki and Yuri hiding inside. Seeing that they're in danger, Kurumi rushes up and grabs the zombie by the back and drops him on the ground. Then she picks up the mountain pick on the ground and quickly throws it to Yuri. 
Yuri took the tool and quickly killed the zombie. At that moment, Kurumi was being pinned down by the zombie. She was reaching for the shovel when the accident happened. The zombie breaks her hand and bites it. The two men next to her were stunned. Kurumi was furious and hit the zombie with the shovel. Luckily, the bracelet Jack gave her saved her life. Now that Kurumi is okay, they hug each other in excitement. On the other hand, when Mickey wakes up from her coma, she sees a burnt zombie. She was so scared that she sat her day up from the floor as fast as she could. Suddenly, a call came to her ear, and she saw that it was Miss Sakura. She hurriedly got up and walked into the health room, and found a bear doll's ear on the floor. This instantly reminded her of what had happened before. If she hadn't picked up the bear doll, Miss Sakura wouldn't have been bitten by the zombies. So she was in deep remorse and pain. When Mickey comes back from her trance, she realizes that Miss Sakura has strangely appeared in front of her. When the three of them heard Mickey's cry and rushed to the scene, they were shocked by the scene in front of them. Miss Sakura had turned into a zombie. What they saw before was just their fantasy. Before her transformation, Miss Sakura used twine to isolate herself for fear of hurting the students. This scene left the four of them with mixed feelings. In order to let Miss Sakura rest in peace, Kurumi took her to her final resting place. Although Miss Sakura is gone forever, her positive spirit is the only thing that keeps them alive. Since all the supplies were destroyed by the fire, the campus was no longer suitable for them to live in. So the four of them organized a diploma ceremony. With tears in their eyes, they left their memories of their alma mater, and the past came back to them. They laughed together, cried together, overcame difficulties together, and dreamed of the future together. Although this is their graduation ceremony, it's also the beginning of their new life. With hopes and dreams, they drove the minicar to a new sanctuary. Shibai!